Well, it starts for real Saturday, and obviously we've got to make great improvements on the backboard, especially because we're getting teams to shoot a low percentage, and we're not coming down with the uh, rebound. So that, that's the first point of emphasis will be for tomorrow. Um, we, uh, I've said this on the pregame show, we're way behind right now. We've got many, many distractions, and really we've, we've been without four major players from last year's team in uh, Peyton Gorky, Luke, and Shane. And it's those distractions, nothing, not Peyton, uh, not Peyton and uh, Gorky, have led to us making slow progress right now. So we've got to pick it up a little bit in the next two days and uh, start playing much better defense, especially on the backboard. Rick, what were your emotions that scene when Kevin, when you put him back in the game and you heard the crowd go crazy for him? Well, I think it's great. And it's kind of a story for when you take your first shot and you don't touch eye, and I think it's great. I wanted to get him some minutes just to get over the jitters of being back in case we use him against Charleston. When did you decide that he was going to play tonight? Did you know they, Before the game. Did they have to go any, any final, anything you had to see in warm-ups? No, no, he, he's been practicing full bar. Yeah. What, what did you want to see from him out there tonight? Just, just want to see him run around, just run and jump and <laughs> just get some confidence. But he's been doing that in practice. <coughs> what have been your impressions? What, what have been your, <laughs> your impressions of him in practice? I mean, you know, we didn't, you didn't know. Uh, he let's let's get off the side. The kid's been back two months and seven, and two days and seven months. I mean, give the, give the young man a chance. I mean, he's not. Gonna, you're asking for an evaluation for a guy who's just getting his feet. So he's doing great, but let's not evaluate until he gets a few weeks under his belt. Else. Talk about Chris Jones and his, his play. I mean, is this is we're starting to see the confidence growing in him? The backcourt is a very good backcourt. Uh, you know, you can readily see, and it's interesting because I see it in pro as well as college because I watch a lot of professional basketball. Guys can't guard anybody off the bounce because of all these new rules. So, you know, you're left in the open court. You, you really, to be a good defensive team, you, gotta, you have to have three defenders playing the ball at all times. And uh, that's something we have to work on because pick and rolls are impossible to guard with these new rules. The same thing in the pros. I mean, you see all these scores, 130 points in the pros. And, you know, these guys are going down the middle and wide open. And that's the, that's exactly the way it was uh, for the pros making those adjustments. So we, we've got to come up with uh, some solution. The one thing you can't do is you can't get a team to shoot 30% and give them a second shot. That's shooting yourself in the foot. You're taking away offensive possessions. He hasn't been very good, and that has Stephen Mangtrees. I mean, that's not making the progress I, I hoped. But um, in Mango's case, he's just a redshirt freshman. It's going to take some time. What do you want to see from him that you haven't seen? He doesn't, you know, one of the greatest things about Kenneth Fareed when I showed him tapes is when he blocks out, he never takes his eyes off the ball so he can pursue it. Mango plays with his head down and tries to box out with his head. He doesn't have any idea where the ball's coming off. And both Steven and Mango don't do that. They don't, they don't have any idea how to pursue the basketball because they don't know where it's coming off, the head's down. Just, just he's very weak fundamentally. He's a good athlete. He runs well, he jumps well, he just doesn't know the fundamentals of the game. He'll catch the ball and if he's passing there, he'll stare at the person. We've been working on just ball faking. So just things that sometimes you, you take for granted when you grow up playing the game. Uh, that he doesn't have right now, but he's a willing learner and he'll pick it up, which is way behind in that area. And hey, what about Steven? What, what do you want to see more from him? He hasn't had any passion. He's not playing with great passion. He has to play as if he hasn't eaten in a week because he doesn't have the ability to let the game come to him. He's got to create the game. Uh, he's got to play with um, my presence motive to get anything out of this game, relentless pursuit. And that's, that's why he doesn't look good out there right now, but I hope he gets it. Yeah, he's, his progress is sort of going the other way because he's dominating his position too much. He hasn't got any competition. Competition in practice is really what makes you better. That's why those guards are so good right now. They're getting great competition. He's not getting any competition in practice. And what happens when you don't get great competition is you develop bad habits. Like he should have had 14, 15 rebounds tonight. And what, he had six? Yeah. He played almost 30 minutes of the game. Is there anything new with Luke? 
you know when he might be back in practice? Or? I don't. I really don't. Um, he's working out. He's swimming. Uh, obviously, we need him. You know, Anton Gill's not ready to play right now defensively, so we, we do need him. But um, he's not ready. we got to be very careful against Charleston because Charleston does a lot of good things. They've got four starters back. Anything else, Coach? Okay, thank you. Right.